This is Bob Anderson from Factory Direct Modulars. <clears throat> I want to do just a quick, just a quick update on on some statistical stuff I've been gathering to try to, you know, <clears throat> keep us all fresh on what's going on in the market with housing, since I got customers out there and I got new customers that want to start houses and and I'm the one saying calm down, calm down, calm down, quit chasing the freaking, quit chasing, quit chasing. Anyways, I want to show that I think the signs of, of quit chasing are going to are going to actually pay off here soon. Um, <clears throat> I think the signs are here. If we just don't have any more go outside government influence and uh, whatnot, we just might actually get back to some kind of normalcy. Don't know when, but anyways, CNBC a couple days ago issued a report on the housing market, and I thought that I would. Uh, I read it two days ago, but I just haven't had time to put this put this together until today. So here it is. Um, one of the things that they pointed out um, was that housing starts in April versus March dropped thirteen percent. Now that now that's drastic, especially March into April, because I mean we're in the we're in the peak ordering buying season, all that kind of stuff right now. 13% drop. Well, let me point out to you <clears throat> a few things along the way. This is while prices for new homes and existing homes are at record levels. But builders are building less houses. Now, this should make you go, huh? Well, anyways, let me get to the next part. This is also why increases in prices <clears throat> have accelerated at the fastest clip in 15 years. Let's see here, 2001, back out 15 years, hmm, that'd be 2006. What the heck happened after 2006? You don't have to be too, you don't have to be too old to know that history. Um, I'm old enough to know the history back when Jimmy Carter was screwing everything up. So, hey, we got George Bush to screw it up in 2006, so it doesn't matter who's in, what political party's in office, they're going to screw it up. So anyways, so here we go. Here's some statistics about home builders. Roughly 15% of home builders nationwide ceased building anything beyond the foundation in April. So not only were there 13%, 13% less, God, phone, not only were there 13% less building permits, and all that kind of stuff. But on top of that, 15% of the existing building permits, builders stopped building on those houses. Just completely stopped. <clears throat> I've actually heard stories from realtors that there is a major home builder that I'm not gonna name right now just because I don't wanna, I don't wanna be a rumor spreader per se. But uh, buried in their clause of their contracts, it says that they have three years to build the house. Buried in their clause. These are four or five hundred thousand dollar houses. Um, and the realtor found out because he asked, when are they going to start building these houses on some that he had contracted back in January, February? This is January, February. This is before the last, this is before even current push ups of prices. And uh, this major builder said, well, line X PDQ in our contract, it says right here, we have three years to build. We're not building right now because prices have gone crazy and we can't get labor. Wait a second, you just hostage this customer for three years? Then, then also further in that contract, just to point out, there's an exclusion contract, exclusion clause that allows them to back out of it that if any time in those three years, <clears throat> they find it uh, impossible to build it uh, based on commodity prices. So even after three years, the customer, the customer still may not get a house. Think about that. <clears throat> Anyways, um, so why did these builders stop building beyond the foundation? Well, commodity prices, lumber, shortages, and the other item that I've been bringing up a lot, labor issues. It's, these builders are saying, even if we buy the materials, we can't find anybody to put them together. So, to give you some statistics, 
the uh, this is from the National Home Builders Association that the broad mix of materials that go into a house besides lumber between last year and this year have gone up 12.4 percent. I'll be honest with you, I thought it was more than that, but 12.4 percent. So that's you know basically everything other than lumber. So that's you know carpet, plumbing, everything across blended together, 12.4 percent. But also in that report, lumber on average for a 2,000 square foot house increased $36,000 from basically June of last year. It's almost a year ago. But 18,000 of that 36,000 was in the last 45 days. So anybody see why some of these builders have said, forget it, I'm not building a house? That coincides with the fact that there's also shortages of appliances and it's not good. So let me, let me, let me sum up to where I said patience could be your virtue. <clears throat> um, two reasons why I'm bringing this up. If the builders stop building, then the shortages are going to get fixed. Somebody in Washington is going to start paying attention. Somebody is going to start figuring this out. If the builders stop building and try and, and trying to figure out how to make a dollar when there is no dollar to be made, um, somebody's going to have to do something. Somebody's going to have to figure something out. Also, the, dem the demand as the curve tries to come back on things like lumber, plumbing, uh, appliances, and whatnot, that the pressure won't be there as much either so let me give you an example on may 7th the lumber index was 1711 now if you if you listen to me in the past i told you that lumber normally is about 400 dollars. 1711 is that 400 percent increase that i talk about um well from may 7th to may 20th which today is may 20th that i'm doing this report we're down to 1390. So that's an 18.75% decline. Is that huge? No, but it's it's better than what it's been doing since March 11th, which was just this. The parabolic climb and the insanity of people freaking out and people ordering and ordering and ordering. Just like the issue we had with the, you know, with the gas pipeline, it services only a third of the gas stations in North Carolina. All of a sudden, you know, our governor goes out and says, "State of emergency." Well, God, thank God he did that because then everybody ran out and bought all the gas. I'll bet you not a person in this. In, I bet you, I bet you hardly anybody would even know about this and or been impacted. If we hadn't had our government go out and tell us state of emergency. So what I'm trying to say is this 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 whole situation should calm down if we can just keep the outside influences from making it worse. Because normalcy will come back. It has to come back. Builders are not going to build houses if they're losing money. Factories are not going to build houses if they're losing money. They're just going to quit doing it. And so, um, lastly, I wanted to say, um, I've got some, I mean, some of these factories are just, you know, it's, it's organized chaos at this point. And one factory that I, uh, that I do business with and I, and I really enjoy, people that I really enjoy, they, they have actually sat down last week. I've been waiting on prices for some houses. And I, they didn't tell me this, but last week they sat down and they revamped their whole pricing model. Um, you know, it, it, it's the old adage, you know, how did Bernie Madoff get found? Well, the stock market crashed. And then all of a sudden, Bernie didn't have money to Ponzi scheme people with money. Well, it's the same thing. These, these prices have gone crazy. And now this factory, for example, has realized that their, their, pricing, their pricing mechanism and how they do things is out of whack and out of scheme and, 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 and therefore they don't have the flexibility to make decisions. So I have some houses that I've been trying to price for, like I said, for over a week. 
And uh, I end up finding out that they revamped everything and hopefully by the end of this week, they get caught up because they've had to redo everything in their backlog and now they're moving forward with you know future customers. But you know, honestly, the gap in time to get it will hopefully create some patience in the market and we won't be so angst uh, as we're trying to order houses and, and build houses and whatnot. So anyways, I don't know if I made any sense to, for anybody here, but I do see the brighter side. That's the point. That's the point of me telling you this. If the builders hold off, if the, uh, if the, um, if, uh, if the, if the lumber index starts to straighten out and by the way, 21 states as of two days ago had told their unemployed people in their state, either find, either go look for a job, show us that you look for three jobs or you not collecting any money. Those are the types of things that are going to turn this around. Anyways, everybody have a good day and uh, I will talk to you soon. And if anything new happens, I will inform you. Thank you very much.